so um, let's let's talk about uh, your latest book, uh, Foresight. Um, was sparked by a question which you often get after your talks: mm-hmm. What do I do uh, for my kids? Yeah. And uh, so, what do people do for their kids uh, in mm-hmm. the future, which have, which awaits all of us and and them? And what is your mission with this new book? Yeah, so no, you know, every time I finish a book, I mean, every time I finish a talk, there's obviously parents in the audience, and the parents in the audience often say to me, "I wish my kid was here, so he could have heard, or she could have heard what you just said." So, what should we do for them? Because I'm worried. I don't know that you know, I'm paying incredibly high school fees or incredibly ridiculous university fees for something preparation that we know is not going to be available or not even necessarily uh, relevant, and so that question kept coming up and, and I found myself answering it more and more in the fact of it's not what you answer. I mean, it's not what you study. It's how you behave because what in the past used to be necessary for us was this linear process of study this to do this, but where we move from this industrial life or world into a quantum world, it starts becoming really important for us to be flexible, adaptable, optimistic, and to be able to move between multiple sectors of thinking. And so it's not so much what you must study, but how you must behave. And the more I thought about this, it's almost like what adults need to be doing is like adults are panicking because they're like, should I be studying artificial intelligence? Should I be doing more blockchain? How am I saying, I don't know, I'm panicking. I'm I'm like, that's not what you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on how do you become a natural adaptive person? How do you let go of your past? How do you become curious about the world you're living in so that you allow a different energy to drive your behaviors. And the linear world was very much based on scarcity. You know, we've, we've got a lot of scarcity in the system, like credit cards, um, overdrafts, marketing, all these things are scarcity driven. And so we're moving into an abundant world and the quantum world, and we need to change the way we behave. We need to change what makes us most, ex- um, what we define as success. And this all becomes obvious when you start doing the work. Um, of cultivating wisdom and awakening curiosity within your being, you become a natural optimist, a natural flexible person, a natural adaptive human being. And then now you can start maneuvering into a world that is allowing you to be multifaceted. In fact, it gifts you for being multifaceted instead of linear. So the book was driven about this desire to get people to understand of not so much the destination, but the behavior. And when you realize that the behavior is really the most important thing, you stop measuring bullshit numbers and it just becomes irrelevant. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. But it's a, it's an amazing book, uh, by the way. So, so thanks so much for sharing it uh, with us, like, like Craig said, and, uh, but uh, you have this amazing way of writing and also putting a book together. And I just kind of love the techniques of how you explain things as well. Um, it really makes it engaging and like very easy to read, which is, I guess, super important. Um, so you talk about uh, four different types of seeing in the book, yeah, uh, yeah. foresight, plain sight, insight, uh, sorry, hindsight, hindsight, plain sight, insight, and foresight. So yeah. maybe you can just uh, explain us sure. what that actually means. So hindsight was very much uh, a result of working with Dojo, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And uh, he speaks about this a lot is, are you living a life based on a set of memories from your past? Or are you living a life based on the vision of your future? Which is such a powerful statement. And that really got me to think about how so many people in the world are stuck in their past, are creating their now based on their memories and their perspectives of where they come from. And so what we've got to do is realize that the past isn't the way we need to create our future because the more predictable our past uh, the more familiar our past is the more predictable our future becomes and the future doesn't require predictability it requires brand newness you know so that's hindsight is like just let's become aware that hindsight doesn't work uh then we get plain sight so the people that are the logical thinkers of the world the people that only believe what their five senses tell them and so if i can see it feel it taste it touch it it's real um i need to see it before i can believe it And we've started to realize that's such an old story because now with quantum science, again, Joe Dispenza, um, biology of belief with Bruce Lipton, it's really believing as seeing, not seeing as believing. It's like we've got to take responsibility for the identity we create, the stories we tell about ourselves and what drives our motivation. But people that are stuck in plain sight are cynics. They're total cynics about the rest of this crap. 
They don't want to believe any of it. They're so stuck in their stories of the past and where they are right now. And they're really quite clearly victims and pessimists about what's going on. Mm. And then we get people that are stuck in insight. And I think insight's actually the biggest problem we have. Because people who are stuck in insight have got incredibly high levels of knowledge. They have got the PhDs, the masters, the MBAs. They've got all the correct thinking formulation. And these people have also been called the expert problem people, is that they are so expert in a way of thinking that it's very difficult for them to change their behavior or to take any information in that doesn't fit into the same constructs of how they've learned how to think about things. And so what happens is they are highly knowledgeable but have zero wisdom because wisdom is practice knowledge. And so what happens is because they're academically rich, they believe that because they've done all that work, they deserve success. And the fact that mm. the success in the future doesn't look like what it used to, they're perturbed by this. And so that's, that's insight, highly knowledgeable, no wisdom. And so foresight is really getting us to a point where we can uh, cultivate wisdom and awaken curiosity. In other words, heal our past. As Alan Watts says, the, the knowledgeable man learns something new every day. The wise man unlearns something new every day. Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza calls it having memories with no wisdom. Um, having memories with no triggers, that's wisdom. Uh, Tony Robbins calls it going from unconscious memories to conscious memories, from blaming your past to thanking your past. Mm -hmm. all, all these teachers have got different languages, but that's what wisdom is. Wisdom is being zen, not allowing your past to trigger you. And then curiosity just really is about making decisions with what makes you most excited, not what's logical and lo also not what's ego driven because logic in the future is not going to get us into the future. The world's not logical. It's not familiar. It's not linear. So when you combine wisdom and curiosity, you've let go of who you were. You are now focused on building the future based on an energy that's excitement that gives you the opportunity to be enthusiastic, innovative, creative, and adaptive because you just flow with this process because nothing's hinged on your back and now you've got this endless energy that you can access. Hmm. So, so, I mean, that's, that's all, it's pretty fascinating. Now the, the inside, right. I just want to just take it a moment back there. You, you were saying that's kind of the dangerous one. And is that kind of that, that person that you were speaking about just before we got on the show that, you know, every now and then there'll be someone that just doesn't agree with what you're saying on stage. It's like, it happens every now and again. And is it that person usually that that's stuck in insight, that's knowledgeable, but they, but they just, they think they know it all, but they feel resented, resentful because they're hearing that things have to change. And just yeah, before, and just before you, sorry, just before you answer the question, um, are, are the people in insight, do you feel that they maybe lack a bit of emotional intelligence? Is, is that also part of it? Absolutely. They focus everything on their heads, not heart. They disconnected their hearts and they become intellectually um, uh, knowledgeable. And you can tell when people these days are, are intellectually aware, but emotionally asleep. And so they, they've got all the processes and systems and they've analyzed everything and it's detailed and it's so, and they're, they've been so successful and they were so clever before artificial intelligence arrived. But now you have artificial intelligence that does it quicker, faster, cheaper than them than they could ever do because what education taught us was how to think linearly. Because that's what the Industrial Revolution demanded of us. And so now what's happened is that education system is based on the left brain thinking and that is being disrupted. So of course it's difficult. Of course. Of course it's difficult to say, you know, I've had all these privileges because of my degrees and PhDs and now all of a sudden, they don't give me that huge step up based on all the hard work that I've done. So of course it's, it's, it's horrible. And you know, I never had that. So I'm, I'm cool. I'm lucky that my brain is wired naturally for this. I was super cuck at school. I, I was just useless. I, I, my brain doesn't think like that. And so I was never wired for that. So it's just that people that were wired like that and forced themselves to be that good now are, dis are being disrupted and are miserable about the process that it's going on. And, and they can't now want to awaken curiosity. And, uh, and you get like these old white men in the audience like, what shit are you talking about? What do you mean awaken curiosity? It's like so flowery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, can, you can call it what you want. You can diss it as much as you want. But as we start moving into the future, adaptability becomes a superpower. Linear mm -hmm. thinking becomes a suicide. 
Waking at dawn, packing the gear September tour and up in the air Stop at the toll, digging for change Snowy Cape Fold, mountain range Gotta be quick so 